Okay, so you don't have to be an expert in algebra in order to solve this equation. And let's go to take a look at the equation. We have 4 to the 3x minus 6 power is equal to 64. And we're looking to solve for the variable x. In other words, what number does x uh, have to be equal to in order to make this equation true? In other words, the left-hand side value equal to the right-hand side value. Now, I'm going to show you three different methods that you could use to solve this equation. But the first method that I am going to show you involves very basic mathematics, maybe a little tiny bit of algebra. But even if you didn't know algebra, you probably could still figure this out. Okay, so feel free to use a calculator. But if you have the answer, well, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll take a look at these three different methods that you could use to solve this equation. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time before I show you the answer, we have this equation. So we have a power here, right? So we have four to the three X minus six powers. So what does X have to equal to? Okay, in other words, this is a number. What number does this have to be in order for this to equal to 64? All right, so let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer, X is equal to three. All right, now, how did you do? Well, if you figure this out, well, I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that, indeed, you know how to solve basic exponential equations. And that's what we have right here. This is what we call an exponential equation because we're uh, looking to solve uh, for a variable that's in the exponent part of a power. So, for example, if you have 2 to the 5th power, this little number up here is called the exponent. This big number down here is called the base. This entire thing is a power. So, any uh, anytime you're looking to solve for a variable and it's in the exponent location, as this one is right here, what we're dealing with is an exponential equation. Now, of course, this is a very uh, big math uh, topic. And typically you study this in like second year algebra, maybe a little bit in first year algebra, but you could still figure this out using very basic mathematics. So let's go to take a look at that right now. Okay, so here is our uh, equation. So first things we want to, the first thing we want to do is understand what does this mean? Okay, so we have four to some power and uh, four to some power is going to be equal to 64. Now this power, uh, of 4 here is expressed as this value right here, 3x minus 6. But this whole thing right here just represents a number. So 4 to some number is equal to 64. So what is that number? Well, what we can do here is use some basic trial and error. So this is where the basic math portion of this comes into, uh, into play. So here is some uh, examples that hopefully you thought about. All right, so the first thing is we're like, well, what power of four will get us 64? Well, four to the first power is equal to four, right? So hopefully everyone knows that. Four to the second power is four times four, and of course that's 16, so four squared is 16. Now I'm looking for 64, so obviously uh, four to the first is not the solution. Four to the second, well, we're going in the right direction, but how about four to the third. Well, four to the third power, in fact, is 64. It's four times four times four, which of course is 16 times four, which is indeed 64. So our exponent has to be three. So four to the third power is equal to 64, meaning that this whole value up here, this expression is equal to three. All right, now at this point, if you're saying, oh, yes, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand that. Well, then what we could do is figure out how to solve this equation right here for 3. Okay, if we set this equal to 3. So if 4 to the third power is equal to 64 and 4 to the 3x minus 6 power is equal to 64, well, then 3x minus 6 must be equal to 3. So let's go ahead and set this, uh, uh, these two things equal to one another, and let's do this right here. 
Okay, so uh, 3x minus 6 is equal to 3. Now, even if you didn't know basic algebra, what you could do is just start plugging in numbers here, right? So hopefully uh, you understand what 3x means. This means 3 multiplied by some number. So you might be able to, you know, plug in some numbers here. x is equal to 1. Well, let's see here. That would be 3 times 1. So 3 times 1 minus 6. No, that's going to give me a, a negative 3. That's not equal to 3. How about 3 times 2? Well, 3 times 2, that's going to be 6 minus 6. That would be 0. No, that's not going to work. How about 3? 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. So 3 is the correct answer. Now, if you have some basic algebra skills, again, you don't have to be an expert in algebra. You could solve this equation for x. So let's go do that right now. All right, so you can see I've already done this work. So 3x minus 6 is equal to 3. So what we need to do is add 6 to both sides of the equation. And then we're going to add down in a column manner. Now, if you need some uh, review with basic linear equations, uh, I'll give you some suggestions here in a second. But let's go and finish this up. So 3x plus nothing is 3x. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so we don't need to write that. And then 3 plus 6 is, of course, 9. All right, so we have 3x is equal to 9. And now we can solve this equation for x by dividing both sides of the equation by 3, which, of course, is 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Now, we kind of figured this out over here because we're kind of plugging in some numbers and seeing which one worked. So, e again, even if you didn't um, remember how to solve basic algebraic equations, if you just kind of use some common sense and trial and error, well, you figured this out. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at another way we could do this problem. Okay, so here, what we could do, and this is something that you will learn at... Uh, uh, maybe like at the Algebra 2 level, second year algebra, it's, these are the type of equations that you typically learn how to solve again after um, taking or completing one year of algebra. So if you're in pre-algebra or Algebra 1, uh, you may not have seen exponential equations at this level. So, but, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't understand how to do this problem. Okay, so another technique that we could uh, use here is to take 4 and 64 and write the bases here. Now remember, if we have 2 to the third power, this is the exponent and this is the base. Let me uh, actually give you another example, like 4 squared. So I can write 4 squared. I can write this base 4 as 2 squared. So 4 squared is the same thing as 2 squared squared. Now one great technique uh, to uh, that you can use to solve exponential equations uh, without the aid of a calculator, is to uh, rewrite the bases as a power. Now, if you can write uh, the bases of both sides of this equation as a power of the same number, well, that is awesome. And, of course, in this case, we can. So 4 is the same thing as, um, let me go and write this right here, 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So I want to write uh, 4 as 2 squared because I can write 64 as a power of 2 uh, as well. That's 2 to the 6. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 times 2, that's 5. This is 32 right here, times another 2 gives me uh, 64. So 64 is equal to 2 to the 6th power. So now what I've done is I've equated the bases. In other words, the bases are the same, and now I can equate the exponents right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. And this particular technique is something that you definitely need to know if you're at a little bit more advanced level of algebra. But even if you have not studied this, hopefully this makes sense to you. Okay, so now if the bases are the same, okay, we're saying that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. In other words, if I said 2 to the x is equal to 2, or no, that's a 7, 2 to the 7th, okay, here's an equation, 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the 7th. Well, if this is the same number as this, well, x must be equal to 7. Well, same thing here. I'm saying that one power is equal to uh, another power, and the bases are 2, uh, so therefore the exponents must be the same. So here we have uh, the equation 2 times 3x minus 6 is equal to 6. Okay, so now we can just simply solve this equation for 6. Again, this is a, you know not too difficult in terms of the algebra here, but if you need some review, again, I'll give you some suggestions here in a second. All right, so 2 times 3x is what? Well, that's 6x. We have to use the, uh, the distributive property here. 2 times negative 6 is a negative 12. 
So that's equal to 6. So to solve this equation, we need to add 12 to both sides of the equation. So 6 plus 12 is 18. So I have 6x is, uh, is equal to 18. So now I can divide both sides of the equation by 6. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. So x is equal to 3. Okay, so let's go back over here. And with our first approach, okay, we still got the answer x is equal to 3. And our second approach, we got the answer x is equal to 3. All right, so those are two techniques they can use uh, to solve this exponential equation. Now I'm going to show you a, a one that's a little bit more fancy. And if you have a, a scientific calculator handy, you can pull one up on your phone, by the way. If you have your cell phone, uh, you just have to put your calculator in, I think, scientific mode. Uh, you know, most cell phones have that option. Or even if you're obviously watching this on maybe a computer, you can just pull up a scientific calculator because we're going to need this button right here the LOG button on your calculator. And if you ever wondered what that uh, uh, function does, well, I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, don't you just like the way I sneak that in? You're like, oh, this guy's been waiting this entire time in order for uh, you know, uh, him to say, hey, subscribe to my channel, you know? Well, listen, I need your help right now. If you need help in math, you should ask for help, but I need help to grow my YouTube channel because I am on a mission to reach as many people as possible because my passion is to teach as, uh, as much math as I possibly can to people who uh, need help in mathematics, okay? Now, what makes the difference in terms of learning math? Well, one of the most critical factor, if not the most critical factor, is who you're learning math from, okay? And I can just tell you right now, you got to, you have to find yourself a great math teacher. And if you don't have one, well, I'd like to be a uh, your math teacher if you think, uh, you know, I'm pretty good at math. Well, obviously, I know my stuff, but it's not about me knowing uh, the material. It's about, hey, do you understand what I'm saying, okay? Because if you're trying to learn from a teacher and you're like totally lost, you're like, I don't get what's going on, and you look like this, well, you're not learning. You're just in a state of frustration. So you've got to find a teacher that you like and understand. And that's why I like to really break things down in bite-sized pieces so everybody who watches my videos uh, kind of gets this material. Right? And I've been doing this for a long, long time. So you know, I've got little tr uh, tricks, techniques, and methods that I, that I can you know, bring to you uh, just based upon experience. So uh, again, I need your support to grow my channel and help as many people as possible. So hit that uh, subscribe button and that notification bell as well. And uh, thanks so much for giving me a little bit of time to explain why I do what I do. Okay, so now let's get back to this problem. And now I'm gonna show you a fancy way to solve this equation. All right, now, when you uh, study you know, this level of um, algebra, you have uh, different types, of, all different types of equations in algebra. What we're studying here is exponential equations because we're looking to solve for the variable and the exponent, okay? Now, when you have an exponential equation, you need to think in terms, okay, of logarithms, okay? Now, if you don't know what a logarithm is, this is an extremely important topic in math, and it has something to do with these buttons on your calculator, the LOG and the LN button, right? Very, very powerful stuff. So, uh, I'm going to show you how to solve this equation uh, using logarithms. Now, if you've never, uh, you know, seen logarithms before, well, then this should be pretty interesting. We already know that the answer here is x is equal to 3. I gave you two methods that you could solve this uh, easy exponential equation uh, using uh, those particular techniques. But now, let's suppose that we had this type of equation. Uh, let me just make something up. How about like uh, uh, 9 to the x power is equal to uh, 12? Okay, 9 to the x power is equal to 12. Well, 9 to the first power is what? That's 9. 9 to the second power is 81. So uh, our answer is going to be pretty close to, to 1, right? It's going to be a decimal. So to solve this type of equation, we can't use the two techniques that I already showed you here. You're going to have to use logarithms. Okay, so when you're faced with an exponential equation, you need to use logarithms. And when you have a logarithmic equation, guess what? You need to use exponents because these two functions are inverses of one another. But again, if you've uh, never said this stuff, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to you. But let's go ahead and get into how we can solve this equation using logarithms. Okay, so a quick example of using logarithms. Again, if you need to know about any of this stuff, logarithms, exponential equations. Matter of fact, let me just tell you right now, 
check out my Algebra 1 uh, course for just basic uh, algebra skills. Now, if you're not a math student and you want to relearn this stuff, check out my math skills rebuilder course. So those are for like the first two methods that we talked about, some basic review. Now, if you're at this level of math and you, and you need help with exponential equations, well then check out my algebra two or pre-calculus course. You'll find links to all of this stuff uh, in the description. Okay, so that is that. Now let's go ahead and get into this uh, equation, uh, solving it uh, using logarithms. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides, okay, the log of both sides. So uh, you can notice here that that's all I'm doing. Now I can do that when I have um, one power on one side of the equation and just a number on the other side. So if this particular equation wasn't written this way, you may have to do some uh, some work to kind of get it cleaned up, if you will, to be ready to take the log of both sides. But again, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to teach you how to solve everything you need to know to solve logarithmic equations in this one little video. All right, but at this point, we can take the LOG of both sides. Okay, now in your calculator, if you have your calculator handy, the LOG of 64 is just a number, okay? It's a value. You can do that right now if you want to pause the video. So you can put uh, LOG of 64, that's a number. LOG of four is just a number. We call this the common logarithm. Again, this is a big, big topic. And I'm not even kind of addressing what a logarithm is, but just so you know, the LOG of a number is, in fact, a number in and of itself. Okay, now what do we do here? Well, what we need to do is use something called a property of logarithms. So when we take the uh, log of a power, what we can do, and this is an awesome little property, when we take the logarithm of a power, we can take the exponent and plop it right in front of the logarithm. And that's what we're going to do right here. So we're going to drop this 3x minus 6 and put it right in front of the logarithm. Now remember, the log of a number, like right here, is a number. Okay, you can, get, you can get a decimal value or you can get some other value, but these are just numbers. So at this point, you know, you have an equation of 3x minus 6. Let's just make some numbers up. Maybe this was like multiply by 5 and that was equal to 18. Right, so this is just a simple algebraic equation at this point. So if you have, you know, uh, if you know how to solve linear equations in algebra, well, then you should be able to solve this equation. But we're not done yet. Okay, so we're not ready to do that. But just keep in mind that this stuff is not that scary, right? The LOG of 4 is a number, and the LOG of 64 is a number. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Well, the easiest way to solve this uh, equation at this point is to divide both sides of the equation by LOG of four, okay? And when I do that, it, the left-hand side, okay, uh, these LOG of fours are gonna cross cancel. So I'm just gonna be left with three X minus six. And then here I have LOG of uh, 64 divided by LOG of four. And now we're gonna put this into our calculator, all right? So hopefully you have a scientific calculator available to you. And this is our equation. We have three X minus six is equal to this. Uh, log of 64 divided by log of 4. And when you put this into your calculator, the answer is going to be 3. Okay, so the log of 64 divided by log of 4, the answer is 3. And now we have a lovely basic linear equation, which we can solve rather easily. So 3x minus 6 is equal to 3. I want to add 6 to both sides of the equation. I get 3x is equal to 9. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 3. I get x is equal to 3, which of course is the same answer. Okay, so three different techniques or methods you can use. Really, the whole idea here is that you need to understand how to solve exponential equations. But this is a topic that comes up. Uh, again, let me just kind of just show you real quick. So you have like pre-algebra, algebra 1. And then you have courses that are like algebra 2, or some of you that might be in college, like college algebra or intermediate algebra, uh, or maybe even college pre-algebra, no, not really so much. But uh, let me just kind of put another course here, pre-calculus. Okay, so these are the typical type of courses that most people take as they progress through math. So in pre-algebra, you learn how to solve real basic equations like 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. In algebra 1, you learn how to solve much more different type of equations like systems of equations, quadratic equations like 3x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. So, you know, you really step up your game 
uh, in Algebra 1 in terms of your ability to solve various types of equations. But in Algebra 1, you typically don't learn about logarithms and things like that. This is um, generally taught at the Algebra 2, College Algebra, or Intermediate Algebra level. Okay, so if you're at these levels and if you've never seen this before, well, this is what you have to look forward to. Now, after you finish these courses, the next course you get into is like pre-calculus. Okay, so this course right here is obviously the course you need before you get into uh, calculus. And uh, most people don't need to take pre-calculus unless you're actually going into, you know, a college major um, that involves calculus, right? Like STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. But if you have a chance to take this course, it is a fantastic course and a very challenging course at that. So I have all these courses uh, with the exception of calculus. You can find links to those in the description below. Now, um, if you are not a math student, but you're like, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I kind of like to relearn this stuff. Well, uh, check out uh, for this level of math, okay? Check out my math skill uh, rebuilders course, okay? I definitely teach you everything in here, a lot of what's in here, and a lot of what's in here. Not 100% everything, but you'll definitely get a good review of this stuff. And of course, if you finish all this, then you um, have a good shot of uh, you know doing well in pre-calculus. Pre-calculus, very tough course, uh, and uh, a big part of pre-calculus is learning trigonometry to include advanced, trig uh, advanced trigonometry. Okay, so don't want to make this video too much longer, but hopefully, you know, you're like, you know what, I was able to figure this out just using some basic math, and I always like to kind of give people an opportunity or encourage people, hey, don't sell yourself short on being able to figure out a math problem because a lot of the times you can figure out the solution just using some trial and error, some common sense. And uh, I think the main idea there is, you know what, when you're faced with a math problem, you know, just keep trying. Don't give up, uh, but you're not going to know if you can solve it or not unless you try. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.